Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's get into the Word of God. Let's go to Genesis chapter 14, and we're going to continue our series on Bible characters and our sub-series on Abraham. And we're going to jump over to, to uh, Genesis chapter 14, verses 12 through 16. 12 through 16. Let's start with verse number 12. <clears throat> verse number 12 of Genesis 14, the Bible says, And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods, and departed. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshkel, and brother of... Oh, there's like a smear in my Bible here. Aher? Aher or Aner? I'm sorry, I can't tell if that's an A-N or A-H, uh, because <laughs> uh, my Bible's smeared for some reason. That's Oh, you know what? I printed it out over here. Let's see here. Aner. Aner, yeah. A-N-E-R. And these were confederate with Abram. Uh, that's smart. See, Abram got along with the people around him and uh, made a somewhat of a confederacy there with them. So they left them alone. Uh, and when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. Now, let me tell you, let me tell you, okay. You say, wow, 318, that's a lot. Compared to who he was fighting, that was not a lot. All right. Well, it was a lot. He rescued Lot. Okay. Okay. That's confusing. All right. Uh, anyway, it was not a lot of people that Abram had with him, his servants. 318 is nothing. Because what had just happened was that there was a war, almost like a world war, because it was uh, multiple nations against another set of nations. So multiple kings against multiple kings, and they just went at it. They went to war. They went to battle. They were killing each other, slaughtering each other. Uh, and then uh, one of those kings was the king of Sodom, and he lost, okay? And so... Uh, they raided Sodom, okay, the, the, the opposing forces, okay, the opposing uh, uh, conglomerate of kings, and they kidnapped a bunch of people for slavery, and including Lot and his family. Took them all into slavery and, and were going to haul them away into their land. And uh, thankfully, one of the guys escaped and was able to make it to Abram and tell him, Abram, Abram, Lot has been captured. And so Abram got 318 men to go fight against a bunch of kings and their armies. Okay? That's, <laughs> wow. All right? Not only that, they snuck up in the middle of the night and he split them up. So it's not like there was all one big group of 318. He split them up. And yet God gave them the victory and he was able to rescue Lot. And everybody that was taken from Sodom was rescued. And all the belongings were brought back to Sodom. And he rescued his nephew, Lot, which the Bible refers to as his brother and also his brother's son, which is his nephew. Same thing, you know, relative, you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> brother, brother, son. Again, the way he treated Lot, I mean, Abram really treated Lot like his own son. Uh, but I want, I want to point out this incredible bravery and courage of Abram. I mean, to just, as soon as he heard, he didn't even have to pray about it. He didn't have to think. He didn't have to uh, just, oh man, what should I do? Immediately he knew, all right, guys, arm up. We're going to rescue my nephew. And immediately the courage and the bravery as a result of his love. And I've talked about that before, uh, you know, behind the pulpit. And, uh, um, you know, love does cause you to be courageous. You have to be. Uh, you know, immediately launched him into this rescue, successful rescue mission of Lot. You know, believers must be brave like Abram. Abram set a very good example here for us to follow. The courage and the bravery. Let me tell you, I think we, a lot of Christians have a misconception. And I, I was just talking to somebody about this last week. 
can't remember who it was. I, I actually I think I talked to a couple of different people about this. Um, but the uh, uh, the temptations of the devil, we 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 always assume, I think mistakenly, that the devil is going to tempt us the same way he tempted Jesus, taking us to a pinnacle and say, if you just worship me, then then I will give you all of these kingdoms. I'll give you power and wealth and and all of these things. And then we just say, no, I will never do those things. And oh, we're such a good Christian, you know. Uh, let me tell you, that was offered to Jesus because Jesus is a king, king of kings, right? Lord of lords. Satan was trying to tempt him to, to, to worship him. But, but most people, most people are manipulated and tempted by the devil through fear, not wealth, not bribery. Most people, you know, the devil isn't going around saying, hey, you want to be rich? Worship me and I'll make you rich. Hey, do you want to? He's not doing that. You know what he's doing? Peer pressure, social pressure, fear. That is how he manipulates minds. That is how he successfully tempts most people. Unfortunately, including in the church. It's fear. He says, hey, do you want to eat tomorrow? Then you better do as I say. Or hey, do you want, you know, if, if you just go along with what I'm, what I'm trying to set up here, then you know what? Uh, your children can have food tomorrow. Why don't you think about that? Huh? Or your children won't get beat up tomorrow. You know, it's fear. And when most people are confronted with that, they cave. Oh, okay, okay, don't hurt my children. Okay, don't hurt me. Please, please, I'll do anything you say. He's not offering kingdoms to people. He's bullying people with his temptation. Threatening because, you know, how many times in the Bible does it say, fear not? Fear is a sin. And, and even in the end, in Revelation, it says that the fearful will have their part in the lake of fire. As believers, and especially if we are filled with the love of God, there should be no fear. Only love, which leads to courage and bravery like Abram. And I am out of time. Thank you so much for joining me today. God bless you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.